In October 2021, C Limited, the Singaporean powerhouse renowned for its flagship brands, Shopee and Garena, stood at the zenith of corporate success. In the Singapore-based e-commerce and gaming company, already one of Asia's biggest digital entertainment. Going that super app route as well. Doing great, and we focus on three things. Number one, we went straight to mobile. And number two, we chose the marketplace approach. And With a staggering valuation nearing $200 billion, it overshadowed the combined worth of Singapore's banking behemoths, DBS Group, OCBC Bank, and UOB. In just four years, C went from being relatively unknown to a favorite among investors, only to then face a significant setback. If you had bought shares four years ago, your investment could have soared by over 1,000% at one point. However, if you bought in at its peak, you might find yourself down by 85% as of now. C's stock reached its highest point in late 2021, around the same time as the S&P 500's peak. However, C's decline wasn't solely due to a general downturn in the stock market, particularly concerning growth stocks. Various factors contributed to the stock's fall. C Limited, a technology conglomerate, comprises three primary businesses. Garena, a global leader in game development. Shopee, a dominant force in e-commerce. And recently, C Money, a rapidly expanding fintech platform. The emergence of C Limited as a tech giant giant transcended traditional norms. Established in 2009, it disrupted the established order, challenging the dominance of institutions deeply ingrained in Singapore's financial landscape since the mid-20th century. However, the narrative swiftly shifted. Within a year, C Limited's valuation plummeted to a mere $25 billion, casting doubt on its once unassailable status. The precipitous decline sent shockwaves through investors, Singaporean citizens, and users of its platforms across Southeast Asia. The abrupt downturn sparked a chorus of questions. What led to C-Limited's downfall? Was it teetering on the brink of failure? Concerns mounted, with fears of potential bankruptcy looming large. Let's delve into how this company transitioned from being one of the most adored brands in the region to experiencing one of the most significant downturns in Southeast Asian history. In the summer of 2005, Stanford University buzzed with anticipation as Apple's legendary co-founder Steve Jobs stepped onto the commencement stage to deliver what would become an iconic speech. Among the eager faces in the audience sat Forrest Lee Xiaodong, accompanied by his then-girlfriend, who would eventually become his life partner. Little did Lee know that Jobs' resonant words, stay hungry, stay foolish, would ignite a flame within him, setting him on an extraordinary entrepreneurial odyssey. Lee poured every ounce of his being into his work over the ensuing decade, navigating the ebbs and flows of the business landscape with unwavering determination. His unwavering commitment bore fruit in the form of C Group, a dynamic consumer internet powerhouse headquartered in Singapore, boasting a diversified portfolio encompassing e-commerce, gaming, and fintech. By March 2021, C had solidified its position as the preeminent public company in Southeast Asia. Soon thereafter, Lee ascended to the pinnacle of Singapore's economic hierarchy, crowned as the nation's wealthiest individual, his vast fortune eclipsing all others at a staggering $19.8 billion. Lee was born in 1978 in Tianjin, a bustling city near Beijing, China. He pursued engineering at Shanghai Jiao Tong University. During his time there, he encountered an American lecturer who struggled to pronounce his name, leading Lee to adopt the moniker Forrest. After graduating, Lee landed a job as an HR manager at Motorola. Despite the stability and good pay, he felt drawn to further education and enrolled in an MBA program at Stanford University. Upon completing his studies, Lee embarked on a new journey by joining a startup called GG Game, founded by his fellow alumnus Chen Nu. GG Game was an innovative online gaming platform, connecting players from Europe and Asia for real-time gaming experiences. As GG Game flourished, tensions arose between Lee and Chen over differing visions for the company. Eventually, their disagreements led to a falling out, prompting Chen to sell his 35% stake in GG Game for $700,000 in 2008. Determined to forge his path, Lee rebranded the company and shifted its focus to game publishing. In 2009, he officially founded Garena, marking the beginning of a new chapter in his entrepreneurial journey. In 2010, Lee struck a significant deal after numerous discussions with Pony Ma, the co-founder and CEO of Tencent, a gaming powerhouse. He secured exclusive publishing rights for the globally acclaimed game League of Legends in Southeast Asia. Shortly after, Tencent entrusted Garena with publishing rights for three other popular titles in the region, Honor of Kings, Crossfire, and Wii Fire. Fast forward to 2017, Tencent took its support for Garena to the next level by becoming a strategic investor. By then, Tencent held the largest stake in Garena, owning 39.8% of its shares, 
while Lee retained 20.7%. This partnership marked a pivotal moment for Garena's growth and solidified its position in the gaming industry. Let's rewind to 2015 when Garena, the largest online gaming distributor in Southeast Asia, was dominating the scene. Founded by Forrest Lee, who hails from China, but resides in Singapore as the CEO of Garena, the company was thriving. One day, while traveling with his family, Forrest asked his daughter what she missed most about China. Her response? Taobao, the popular Chinese online shopping platform owned by Alibaba, headquartered in Hangzhou, as any dedicated father would, Forrest decided to bring that experience to Southeast Asia by creating Shopee. However, the journey wasn't without its challenges. Competition was fierce in the online shopping arena, with numerous players vying for dominance. Facing formidable competitors like Koten, Bukalapak, Tokopedia, Carousel, and Lazada, which had already established their presence in the market for three to five years, Forrest Lee's venture into e-commerce with Shopee seemed daunting. Complicating matters was the fact that during this period, Trust in e-commerce companies was still in its infancy, amplifying the skepticism towards new entrants. Moreover, the cultural diversity of Southeast Asia posed a significant challenge, making it even more improbable for Lee to succeed. With Lazada, backed by Alibaba, standing as a formidable rival, the odds appeared stacked against Shopee. However, despite the seemingly insurmountable obstacles, Lee defied expectations and shocked everyone with his determination and innovation. Shopee stands out notably due to its mobile-centric strategy, recognizing the increasing reliance on smartphones for online browsing. Leveraging this trend, Shopee optimized its website for seamless access across smartphones, tablets, and desktops, ensuring a smooth user experience regardless of the device used. While Shopee's competitors had already developed mobile apps before 2015, they primarily focused on website-based platforms. Forrest Lee, however, took a different approach. Recognizing the growing trend of mobile usage, he questioned why not bring the shopping experience directly to where people are, their smartphones. This bold decision proved to be a game-changer for Shopee as it successfully tapped into the mobile-centric behavior of consumers, ultimately contributing to its success. With a simple and intuitive interface, navigating Shopee's platform is effortless, whether through the website or the Shopee app, which caters to both Android and iOS users. The app's user-friendly design allows customers to easily search for products, explore detailed product information, and complete purchases with minimal obstacles. Another crucial factor contributing to Shopee's success was its marketplace approach, which diverged from the conventional e-commerce model. Instead of the platform holding inventory, Forrest Lee opted for a bustling marketplace concept. This model resembled a vibrant market where anyone could set up shop and sell their goods. By adopting this approach, C-Limited shifted away from the burdensome task of managing and warehousing products themselves. Instead, they provided a platform for sellers to connect with potential buyers, facilitating a dynamic ecosystem of commerce. This strategy empowered sellers while offering customers a diverse range of products and choices. Shopee strategically focuses on highly profitable categories, such as women's fashion, accessories, health, and beauty. This targeted approach maximizes revenue while catering to popular consumer preferences. One of Shopee's key advantages lies in its localization strategy. Unlike many e-commerce platforms serving global markets through a single website or app, Shopee develops separate applications tailored to specific regions. For instance, they have dedicated Shopee apps for Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Vietnam, and Thailand, each designed to meet the unique needs of local consumers. Moreover, Shopee offers specific categories within its platform that align with the preferences of the local audience. For example, they feature halal sections on the Malaysian and Indonesian sites to cater to the Muslim-majority populations in these countries. This localized approach has proven highly effective, allowing Shopee to resonate with local shoppers who prioritize shopping within their region. By providing a tailored experience, Shopee enhances user satisfaction and establishes a stronger foothold in each market. Recognizing their position as latecomers in the e-commerce arena, Shopee devised strategies to distinguish themselves from competitors. Understanding the allure of deals and discounts Shopee ensures a continuous stream of promotions and add-ons, enticing customers with the promise of something special each time they shop. Moreover, Shopee taps into the desire for convenience by enabling users to bundle multiple items in a single transaction, offering discounts for such purchases. This approach caters to consumers seeking efficiency and value, further driving sales and engagement on the platform. As shoppers increasingly take advantage of these enticing offers, they are inclined to spend more time and money on Shopee, fueling long-term sales growth and revenue. 
Furthermore, Shopee's commitment to providing value and convenience contributes to its high ranking in search engine results, bolstering its search engine optimization efforts and enhancing visibility to potential customers. Forrest found himself in a marathon he was late to, prompting his team to push harder than ever. They logged extra hours, took more risks, and adapted swiftly to stay in the race. Despite the challenges, Forrest knew he had to keep running. In 2017, they kicked things into high gear by listing shares on the New York Stock Exchange, supercharging their efforts and propelling Shopee forward. As they surged ahead, competitors that once seemed unbeatable began to fade into the background. By 2019, Shopee had risen to become the second largest online marketplace in Southeast Asia, trailing closely behind the industry giant Lazada. With every strategic move Shopee made, Lazada seemed poised to counter it. Whenever Shopee launched a new promotion, Lazada rolled out an even grander one. If Shopee initiated a fresh ad campaign, Lazada swiftly followed suit with a competing campaign. Lazada spared no effort in attempting to thwart Shopee's momentum, fiercely engaging in the battle for dominance in the online marketplace. In 2018, Lazada underwent a significant restructuring of its management as Alibaba, its majority owner, increased its stake to approximately 80% of the company. With the aim of decisively outmaneuvering Shopee, Lazada revamped its brand operations and leadership team. The Alibaba management team, renowned for their instrumental role in Alibaba's success, was brought in to spearhead the transformation. However, a critical challenge emerged. The Chinese management team lacked a deep understanding of the Southeast Asian markets. Instead of tailoring the platform to suit the nuances of Southeast Asia, Lazada's approach began to resemble a replica of Taobao, Alibaba's successful model in China. Local sellers in Southeast Asia were taken aback when they found their back-end operations interface had suddenly changed. One seller, familiar with Alibaba's platform in China, noted that Lazada's new interface closely resembled Taobao's, albeit with local languages instead of Chinese. This shift risked alienating Southeast Asian consumers, as the Taobao model may not resonate as effectively in the region. In simple terms, while Lazada focused on improving the quality of items, Shopee prioritized selling cheaper and more affordable products in bulk, which resonated better with consumers. During this period, Lazada's trusted vendors repeatedly emphasized the importance of this approach to the company. However, the Lazada team failed to heed their advice. Local sellers agreed that Lazada's back-end interface needed an upgrade due to its difficulty in navigation. However, the sudden change was less than ideal. Taobao's comprehensive back-end management and product functions, including coupons, customer service IM tools, and storefront design capabilities, were all introduced to Southeast Asian sellers at once, making it challenging for them to adapt. A Lazada employee likened the situation to installing a Boeing 747 engine on a classic car, emphasizing the mismatch between the advanced systems from Alibaba and Lazada's existing infrastructure. The integration of hundreds of Alibaba's middle management employees into various positions within Lazada unsettled its original European managers, a Lazada insider explained. On one hand, the European managers were relatively arrogant and not accustomed to reporting to Chinese staff. On the other hand, they knew their new colleagues were here to replace them. Who would want to work in Lazada under such circumstances? Notably, key European figures such as Lazada's co-founder, Charles de Benoit, and chief marketing officer, Tristan de Beloy, left the company, followed by many others. The language barrier exacerbated the tension, as Alibaba's employees generally preferred to communicate in Chinese, while English served as the main language of communication in Singapore, where Lazada is based. During the tumultuous period when Lazada grappled with internal challenges, Forrest seized the opportunity for Shopee to shine. Doubling down on their customer-centric approach, Shopee intensified localized campaigns and fostered stronger ties with regional vendors. They made significant investments in logistics to ensure faster and more reliable deliveries, gaining a competitive edge. Forrest's proactive strategy included collaborations with local influencers and leveraging the mobile-first nature of Southeast Asian users. Introducing features like in-app games and live streaming enhanced user engagement transformed Shopee from a mere marketplace into an immersive experience. In early 2019, Shopee achieved a milestone by overtaking Lazada for the first time in five years. This success wasn't a stroke of luck. It repeated in the following quarter. By the second quarter of 2019, while Lazada boasted 174 million users, Shopee soared with 200 million visits per month, emerging victorious in the battle for dominance. Then, unexpectedly, something occurred. In 2019, a virus outbreak struck, causing widespread job losses 
and confining people to their homes. Professional reports painted a grim picture of collapsing economies. However, there was a surprising turn of events as stock prices surged and markets shifted from red to vibrant green. Governments worldwide implemented quantitative easing measures, essentially flooding the economy with newly printed money. Imagine receiving an extra $1,500 each month without a job and being stuck at home. Many turned to stock markets, gaming, and online shopping for solace. C Limited found itself at the center of these trends and experienced a sudden surge in users and activity. Overnight, it soared like a rocket, capitalizing on the increased demand for its services amidst the unprecedented circumstances. C Limited's meteoric rise positioned it as the fastest growing tech company in Southeast Asia. In 2019, its stock price stood at approximately $12 per share. By early 2020, it skyrocketed to $50 per share. Come January 2021, it reached an astonishing $200 per share. And by November 2021, it surged to an unprecedented $350 per share. This staggering valuation made C Limited the most expensive company in Singapore, surpassing the combined worth of the second, third, and fourth most expensive companies in the country. As a result, Forrest Lee ascended to become the richest man in Singapore. Buoyed by this success, Lee and his team exuded confidence, driving them to pursue even more aggressive expansion plans. They embarked on a hiring spree and diversified into unrelated ventures, including shoppy food. Additionally, they expanded into new territories, such as Brazil in Latin America and France in Europe, with a bold ambition to secure the number two position in every region across the globe. In 2019, Shopee made its first foray into Latin America by launching a localized website in Brazil. Then, in 2021, the company expanded its operations into Mexico, Chile, and Colombia, aiming to tap into the growing e-commerce market in these countries. Looking towards Europe, Shopee unveiled its marketplace in Poland in September 2021. Following this successful launch, the company swiftly introduced its platform to Spain and France in the subsequent two months, signaling its ambition to establish a strong presence in the European market. Continuing its global expansion, Shopee entered the Indian market in November 2021, seeking to cater to the vast consumer base in the region. Additionally, the company commenced operations in South Korea last year with a focus on facilitating local merchants' access to customers in Shopee's existing markets. Despite its growing footprint in South Korea, it's worth noting that Shopee does not yet offer a consumer-facing platform in the country. Nonetheless, its strategic moves in various regions underscore its determination to thrive on a global scale in the competitive e-commerce landscape. However, soon thereafter, things began to take a downturn. The price of C-Limited dropped by approximately 3 to 5%, which, while not catastrophic, raised concerns. By January 2022, the decline deepened to around 60%. Adding to the turmoil, Tencent, a major investor, began divesting $3 billion worth of shares over two weeks, sparking widespread alarm. Externally, the perception of COVID-19 shifted, leading to fewer people staying at home, resulting in decreased gaming and online shopping activity. Investors grew wary, questioning the rationale behind heavy investment in C-Limited. Furthermore, the government's extensive money printing during the peak of the pandemic led to severe inflation, causing prices to skyrocket. In response, authorities implemented interest rate hikes, dampening economic growth. As a result, investors shifted focus towards safer assets like gold and bonds, dampening enthusiasm for tech stocks. Compounding these challenges, Garena's game Free Fire, boasting over 1 billion downloads, unexpectedly faced a setback as it was banned in its largest market, India. Internally, C Limited faced mounting challenges as their overconfidence and aggressive expansion strategy, once successful during prosperous times, began to backfire. Forced to reassess their approach, they made the difficult decision to exit markets. In March 2022, they withdrew from Europe and India, while also shuttering operations in Chile, Mexico, Colombia, and Argentina. Moreover, several ventures failed to meet expectations. Shopee Food, for instance, struggled to gain significant market share, consistently hovering below 5% in most countries except Vietnam, where they captured an impressive 40% share. Despite this achievement, overall performance fell short, exacerbating the company's challenges. Compounding matters, C Limited repeatedly missed earning targets, signaling deeper underlying issues. The situation escalated rapidly, underscoring the urgency for corrective action. Furthermore, during the pandemic, C Limited had a prime opportunity to solidify its leading position in Southeast Asia. 
flush with cash, it had the chance to establish a formidable moat around its core e-commerce business. However, instead of focusing on this crucial aspect, C Limited pursued low moat, low quality revenue streams by expanding its e-commerce solutions to distant markets such as Poland, France, South America, and even the US. This decision led to revenue growth, but it failed to create a moat around these ventures. Meanwhile, by neglecting to invest in a Southeast Asia fulfillment network, competitors like Lazada and TikTok seized the opportunity to gain ground. By the end of 2022, Forrest Lee recognized a critical issue. The moat around Southeast Asia e-commerce was weak. Forrest and his team were under immense pressure to change things quickly, or they risked losing everything. They couldn't afford any mistakes or complacency. They started slashing spending drastically, cutting about 7,000 jobs in just six months, roughly 10% of their team. The atmosphere was tense, with colleagues and friends being let go every few days. Employees lived in fear of being next, constantly on edge as people disappeared week by week. This took a toll on team morale, which sank to an all-time low. As challenges mounted within C Limited, the company made tough decisions to navigate the storm. They began by cutting back on perks like free dinners and ice cream in some offices, amenities which they were proud of and once considered essential for attracting younger talent. These perks were once sources of pride and used as recruitment tools, but they had to be sacrificed in the face of adversity. To demonstrate solidarity and commitment, Forrest himself announced that he would forego his salary. This symbolic gesture aimed to rally the team for the tough road ahead. As 2023 approached, the company took even more drastic measures, including freezing salaries and slashing bonuses for most employees. The question remains, did these sacrifices ultimately pay off in the long run? Since the end of 2022, C Limited has returned to profitability. In a surprising twist, India has reopened to Free Fire, marking a positive development. Additionally, they have reintroduced ice cream perks, albeit amidst ongoing cost-cutting measures. However, despite these efforts, the stock price has continued to decline, now plummeting by approximately 85% from its all-time high. Adding to the challenge, other online marketplaces are experiencing resurgence. Investors have expressed concerns over C Limited's future profitability, anticipating further losses due to intense competition from TikTok. TikTok's shop growth has skyrocketed from 4% in 2022 to a staggering 133% in 2023, presenting formidable competition for C Limited. C Limited has recently unveiled a fairly robust fourth quarter results and provided an optimistic outlook for 2024. Momentum is on the rise, with growth gaining momentum and profitability showing signs of improvement. In the latest fourth quarter results, C Limited reported revenue of $3.6 billion, showing a 5% year-over-year increase for the fourth consecutive quarter. While this growth might seem modest compared to its previous triple-digit growth, it surpassed analyst estimates by $70 million, a positive development. However, fourth quarter Garena revenue was $511 million, dropping by 46% year-over-year and 14% quarter-over-quarter due to reduced user engagement and lower monetization. This decline indicates a concerning trend for Garena's performance. Despite these challenges, management sees promising signs for Free Fire, Garena's flagship game, with over 100 million peak daily active users in February. They anticipate double-digit, year-over-year growth in Free Fire users and bookings in 2024, suggesting a potential rebound in Garena revenue. Meanwhile, fourth quarter Shopee revenue reached $2.6 billion, marking a 23% year-over-year increase, with core marketplace revenue hitting $1.6 billion, reflecting a robust 41% year-over-year growth. Shopee's ability to gain market share in a competitive environment highlights its strong value proposition and execution. Lastly, C-Money revenue in the fourth quarter amounted to $472 million, up by 24% year-over-year, driven primarily by the consumer and SME credit business, which grew by 27% year-over-year. Despite a slowdown in growth over recent quarters as the segment matures, C-Money continues to expand. Forrest Lee expressed optimism, stating, Despite an environment of intensified competition in Southeast Asia, we believe Shopee had a meaningful gain in market share between the start and the end of 2023. This confidence in Shopee's performance underscores the company's resilience in navigating challenging market conditions. C Limited's journey is one of resilience and triumph amidst adversity. Initially met with skepticism, they defied the odds to emerge as the undisputed market leader in Southeast Asia. However, with success came immense pressure and the risk of overconfidence. 
External challenges, including economic fluctuations and unforeseen events like the pandemic, added to the company's woes. Despite these hurdles, C Limited remains a formidable force in the market, albeit with some setbacks. Forrest Lee may no longer hold the title of Singapore's richest man, but the company's influence and wealth endure. The story of C Limited serves as a poignant reminder of the unpredictable nature of the business world. As they navigate the future, only time will reveal whether they can reclaim their former glory or if new chapters await in their journey. Overall, 2024 will prove to be a pivotal year for C Limited as it endeavors to demonstrate its ability to deliver on its commitment to sustainable growth. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it enjoyable, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to stay updated with our future releases. If you liked this video, you'll likely enjoy the one displayed on your screen right now. Click on it and I'll see you in the next one.